Are we living in the end times? According to biblical scripture, yes, we are living in the last days. We know this because besides the crazy weather and the earthquakes the world is having, there are many other end time events that have already taken place in the past and that are taking place right now. One of these end time events is Aliyah, the return of the Jewish people back to Israel. The restoration of Israel, the drying up of the Euphrates River, and the blatant lawlessness seen worldwide are just a few of the many signs. We need to be ready because the Bible says Messiah is coming back soon. And if his word came true in the past and is being fulfilled even today, then we can be sure it will come to pass in the future. Hello and Shalom. This is Lady Watchman with an End Times Discussion. To discover truth, it's important to look at what's happening today in our world and compare it with God's Word. What we do with that information will determine our response. Will we panic or will we have peace? Regardless of all the frightening signs indicating we are in the last days, there is hope that God has everything under control. Because of his love, people are being radically free from things like fear, anxiety, and depression. Through his word, men and women are discovering a new confidence in who they are. They're finding rest for all their troubles, and now they have the boldness they've always wanted to fight back the enemy. No doubt we are in a thrilling time of transformation and progress, just like biblical prophecy said it would be. If you like this video, share it with someone you love, hit like, and subscribe. I was once torn on what to believe about the two-state solution in Israel until I researched the scriptures myself. This video shows just some of the scriptures that I found in regards to God's truth. I encourage you to do your own research. There's great tension over Israel and the Temple Mount. The question is, who do they belong to? The Jewish people or the Palestinian Arabs? Tempers flare, people protest, and thousands have been killed over this highly contested piece of real estate. But what does God say about it? The Bible says Israel belongs to the Jews, and it has for over 3,000 years. From Genesis to Revelation, God claims the land of Israel as his, and the Jews as his chosen people. Moses spoke with the Israelites on behalf of the Lord. Deuteronomy 7, 6 says, You are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all peoples on the face of the earth. Here, God claims the Jews as his chosen. Genesis fifteen eighteen says, On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I have given this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. In this verse, God gives the boundaries of Israel. Genesis 17, 8 says, Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all of the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. In this verse, the Lord says how long the promise is for. God says it's the Jews' land forever. As evidenced by the return of the Jews and its restoration, Israel, formerly called Canaan, was given to God's chosen people, the Jews, as an everlasting covenant. God gave us every detail of this promise because he knew in advance this land would be highly contested. When that day comes, I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all peoples. All who try to lift it will hurt themselves, and all the earth's nations will be massed against her. Zechariah 12.3 he also addresses the Palestinians in Scripture and clarifies the distinction between Jews and Arabs in the Father's inheritance. In fact, he said this right before Sarah became pregnant with Isaac. It is written in Genesis seventeen twenty through 21 And as for Ishmael, the Arab patriarch who descended from Hagar and Abram, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. 
He shall beget twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at the set time next year. Both the Bible and the Quran agree that Israel belongs to the Jews. However, Muslims believe the covenant God made with Abraham regarding Israel was forfeited by the Jewish people because of their disobedience to God. As a result, Muslim Arabs in Israel and many around the world believe the Jews were exiled out, never meant to return, even though they don't have texts to validate that claim. However, Christians and Jews do. This is why there's so much opposition to Jews and Christians ascending and praying on the Temple Mount. Muslims believe it now belongs to them. Jews and Christians are only allowed on the Temple Mount during certain days of the week at certain times of the day. It is completely closed on the Sabbath or Shabbat, which is the most holy day of the week for both Christians and Jews. In addition, we can be arrested for doing things like praying, singing, dancing, walking barefoot, or blowing the shofar even though we've been commanded by God to do some of these things. This claim was validated. I personally experienced this opposition when I recently visited the Temple Mount last fall in 2022. I was literally chased down and yelled at by a Muslim, who is of no authority. I was walking on the Temple Mount barefoot, and he did not relent until I put my shoes back on my feet. Have you ever thought, what is it that Christians and Jews have in common, to be so hated in the eyes of Muslims? The answer is Jesus, Yeshua, the Word of God, the way, the truth, and the life, the Messiah. Rumors are true. The Jews did break their first covenant with God, but God never broke his. As punishment, the Jews were exiled to the four corners of the earth after the destruction of the second temple. To this day, they no longer make animal sacrifices according to Mosaic law, the law of Moses. But there are over 700 prophecies that remind us of God's promise. Those scriptures all predicted the return of the Jews back to the promised land in the last days. But this time, even though many Jews may not even believe it, God invited them into a new covenant through the spotless blood of the Lamb, Jesus, Yeshua. Jeremiah foretold this new blood covenant thousands of years before Jesus was even born. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34 says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they will be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin, I will remember no more. It isn't just about the land. There is salvation attached to their return to the land. The Bible warns those who are in opposition to prepare for war because he will retaliate against those who try to even divide the land. Joel 3, 1 through 10, or 4, 1 through 10, says, For behold, in those days, at that time, I will bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem. I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. They have cast lots for my people, have given a boy as a payment for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they may drink. Moreover, what have you against me, Tyre, Sidon, and all parts of Philistia? Are you paying me back for something I did? If you're paying me back for something I did, then easily, quickly, I'll pay you back right on your own head. Because you took my silver and gold, you brought my good treasures into your temples, the people of Judah and Jerusalem you sold to the Greeks, so that you could remove them far away from their land. I will rouse them from the place where you sold them and pay you back right on your own head. I will sell your sons and daughters to the people of Judah. 
and they will sell them to the men of Sabian, a nation far off. For Adonai has spoken. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. As it is with Israel and the Temple Mount, so it is with those who believe in God's Son, Yeshua. If we have put our faith in Jesus, we, non-Jews, are God's chosen people too. We don't replace the Jews, but we are grafted into the family of God through the new covenant. The return of God's people to the promised land is God's will, and it is a good thing. So beware of people who call good evil and evil good. Isaiah 5, 20 through 21 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. To fight against what God says and what God promised is a losing battle. Who can fight against God? Acts 5.39 But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. God warns what will happen to those who oppose him. The good news is he rewards overcomers. Revelation 21, 7 through 8 says, He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, and those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, they shall be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Most people don't know this, but that's how serious God is about Israel and sin. Matthew twenty four twelve through 14 And because lawlessness will abound, and love of many will grow cold, but he who endures to the end shall be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. It is clear, Israel belongs to God's chosen people, no one else. And those who want to divide his land or give her over to someone else is fighting against the Creator himself. It is clear by Scripture we are in the end times. Just like the promise he made with the Jews in the days of old, we know Jesus is coming back. We're sure of it because God keeps his promises. He never changes. How can we make peace with God? How can we be sure we're saved from his wrath, that we're not going to be destroyed and go to hell? How do we know if our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life? We have to admit the sins we commit against God get us into trouble in this life and keep us from having peace with God. But God made a way for everyone. Jesus, our Messiah, came to free us from our depression, from our pain, from our addictions, from our anxiety, from our fear, from confusion and anything else that keeps us bound. He came to give us eternal life and an abundant life here on earth. We all sin. The payment for sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Yeshua Jesus, our Savior. There's no distinction between Jew or non-Jew, male or female. God made a way for everyone. Yeshua, a Jew, paid the ultimate blood sacrifice when he laid down his life and was beaten beyond recognition. He was buried in a rich man's tomb He conquered death and hell 
He rose from the dead on the third day so we could have eternal life. The Lord is rich to all who call upon him. If we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead and acknowledge publicly with our mouth that Jesus Yeshua is Lord, we will be saved. We will have peace with God. If we do these things, we will have eternal life. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the land of Israel yesterday, and he's keeping his promise still today. He promised Jesus would return soon, and we can bank on that because he will remain a promise-keeping God forever. That's just who he is. But don't take my word for it. Take God's word for it. If you believe Jesus came to make peace between Jew and non-Jew, between us and God, God is real. Talk to him. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Turn from your sin. Read his word for yourself. Study the scripture and compare it to the world events we're seeing today. Equip yourselves for the days ahead. He's given us everything we need. If you're still not sure if you believe, talk to him. Ask him to prove himself real to you, and he will. Please, don't wait until it's too late. Choose this day whom you will serve. Make sure you're ready for the days ahead and for his return. Make sure your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thanks for joining us as we prepare for the glorious return of our Messiah, Jesus Yeshua HaMashiach, to the Mount of Olives in Israel. Don't forget to share the good news and this video with someone you love. Hit like and subscribe. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and show you his favor. And may the Lord lift up his face towards you and give you shalom.